hello welcome back to the rc barn again today well i've jumped ahead a little bit on the flying king project that's what we're going to continue with today um i didn't really film a whole lot more of the fuselage build after the last video that i posted um but i did uh get her framed up <laughs> Uh, just a quick few little things here. I mean, there really wasn't much to it. I squared it up on the plans on the overhead view and on the front end. Um, notice that the F2 and F3 bulkheads were squares, so we're straight through this median. So I glued them on first. I marked about where they were going to be at and inside the fuselage there and I started with one side and I glued it on I just tack glued it on with some CA same with F3 and then I did the same with the other side so and then I put it back on the bench like this yeah because the bottom's flat and then uh, went ahead and uh, pinned and clamped and did everything I could to get this thing straight I don't think it turned out too terribly bad. I think I got a little bow in the right side that isn't quite right, but anyways, it's 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 hardly noticeable. So, anyways, I tack I glued all this together with CA. I glued CA the uh, firewall on. Um, now I know a lot of you're gonna be like, "What in the heck are you doing?" Gluing? Well, I think that it's easier to get things glued together a little quicker. Um, with CA and then um, I always go back in and add tri stock to the uh, firewall and that's where the epoxy comes in at I've never had uh, a firewall fail, fail on me yet doing that um, I am going to pin this uh, really no reason to but uh, you know a few pins through the through the uh, doubler and the boss side into the firewall never hurt anything either um, so anyways, that's where we're at on the fuselage. Uh, the rear stringers back here, they just get glued at the intersection joints where the uh, V's come together. As you can see, at various points, they come out pretty good there. So anyways, that's where we're at on the fuselage. I do have to finish up the front end. I think I went ahead and decided that... Uh, I'm just going to cap this like as if there was a, a wing section here because the if I come here to here it's not going to be much of a view for you know my pilot to see through you got to have one of them right so anyways uh, I'm going to make it look factory up here and uh, you know we'll just I'll probably just take and, and bow some quarter inch back here sand to fit shape it a little bit don't have to be strong it's just there more for aesthetics than anything um to uh you know straighten out this this top end a little bit uh since we're you know the wing would normally be sitting here you know is where the wing would normally be sitting but we're you know all in conversion uh, i did sand on the a little bit on here just to true it up to get things started to fit so that's where i'm at on the fuselage we're not working on this today it's where I want to stop at on that so I started um, looking at these wings a little bit more here today and I really need to get these things finished up so I went ahead and started doing some preliminary shaping and got uh, got the wing these are the center I'll get you where I can you looking at not just me here <laughs> So I went ahead and started, and I finished sheeting this tail end. I did not do nothing with the bottom yet. Um, I still want to I need to finish the, uh, you know, the 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 the. the uh, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Yeah, for the pull apart wings, the brace in the middle here, and uh, these are still not epoxied in yet. I haven't done that yet or nothing. So I need to do all that, and then I need to shear web this, and then I can go ahead. And once I get everything kind of fine-tuned here, then um, I can lay these on the, um, pin these to the table or whatnot, and start figuring out some wing instances so I can get the saddle on the wing done, or on the fuselage done. And uh, then I can finish these up. Uh, like I said, Bombay doors are going to be right here. You know, boom, boom. I'll have some hinges in here and stuff. And, uh, you know, probably just a couple 
uh, micro servos up on top here to, to control them. Uh, it won't take very much. So, anyways, that's where I'm at on those. I got those fitting pretty nice. And I decided, well, I ain't started working on the airlines or the uh, flaps yet. So, um, that's where I'm in the middle of doing right now is uh, getting the uh, flaps and airlines figured out. No particular reason, just to kind of maybe wrap up building here a little bit. In order to cut some wood out, I had to make um some of these pieces here these are the ribs for the airlines and the flaps and i'm going to just show you how i went ahead and laid one of these up so we'll grab some 30 inch uh 330 seconds here then line that up with the tail end Uh, notice I'm not using any uh, wax paper on my plans right now because, well, glue don't go through sheeting. We're going to build the rib and the air one all in one go here. I'm not going to worry about cutting it in half just quite yet. There's a few steps here that uh, I want to show you guys. So anyways, um, you got these little, I'll try to show you real quick. I don't know if you can see that right there. There's these little tick marks here, and they're all down here. And this is to show you where the uh, rips are supposed to line up at. So, uh, that's why I was using this. So I'm just, all I'm doing here is marking... Like here, I'm going to mark the right side where that goes, but I'm going to mark the left side of the rest of the where the ribs are going. And this, all I'm doing is lining this up with the edge of the balsa and drawing a straight line. And I'm not making both marks, that's just doesn't seem like you would need to do that on here. The left on this, and then the right. And this because this is where the flap and the arrow on separate at. This is the right wing panel. And then all I need to do, I'm going to grab my glue here. Just going to try to get as much done as we can. But anyways, what I was saying is, is um, just apply a little bit of glue. And it's more important that you line up that edge right there with the leading edge of the sheeting. Is So that way you're making a fairly consistent straight leading edge line and that doesn't have to be accurate it just it's got to be close um you know and then you know we can sand it we'll have to sand the leading edge here in a little bit anyways once i get all these laid into place i uh on the ribs that i made of course uh, if you guys remember to watch me do that um I was going to cut all the tails off of the ribs and then cut the angle into them with a template I made. I went ahead and made a template and I says, you know, it says it just be easy enough. Here's the template I made. Okay. That's, yeah, it just be easy enough. I'm not going to have enough. Uh, 
ribs here to do what I need to do. I'm going to end up making some anyways. So I used the uh, slice method that I used to cut the ribs off of. I found a, a block of wood over there and I just made some new ones. The only ones that I'm using now from the original ribs are these three that I didn't get out of the slice. So I'm just kind of eyeballing these, but the biggest thing is is to make sure that 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 this part here. Maybe I can get you in closer. This this nook. There you go. Right there. It's right on that edge of the sheeting. Then I'm going to skip over this one for a minute. So anyways, the other thing that I struggle with on this is, well, I, you know, changing over to dual plot servos and it already had dual airline servos, but anyways, the other thing I struggled with was getting the uh, figuring out what the uh, arm I needed to use because see all this gap in here. Well, that's going to be hollow when because the top gets sheeted and the leading edge gets capped. I'll show you that here in a minute, but. What I ended up going with, so that's going to be another uh, deal to modify on it because I, I decided they, they showed a like a Dubois style arm that gets glued in and screwed in during assembly. I don't like to do that, it's kind of a pain to cover around, and then you know, what if it breaks and you got to maintain it? Something happens, you know, and now you're, you know, ripping wood apart from the air wand to, you know, do what should be a five-minute job, right? But anyways, how are you guys bearing on the cold? I know I'm off all week. Trucks wouldn't start Monday morning, and I wasn't, I haven't been feeling too good. And so I ended up taking Monday off, or yeah, it'd be yesterday. And the reason why I came back to the center section there is because these are such a tight fit. And I didn't want... To be in a rush to glue this one in either because it's a yeah, pretty good. Then with the glue already put on the flap side, it was going to start setting it up before I could get the airlon tip side in. So I. Um, skip over this one so that way it's got fresh glue there to tear down now at this point of the construction we need to pull it from the plants
Got some stuff over there that I don't want you guys to see yet. <laughs> okay, that should be good. All right. All right, take it off the plans. And then we're going to saw this in half. calls for 332 second by four on the top I do not have any it seems to be the going case with this plane so what I did is I just took a piece of my 330 seconds by three and I'm going to line it up on the leading edges here that way it's nice and flat like so and I'll end up with a little bit of a gap at the bottom. See what I mean? So, then I took another sheet and I cut my what I needed for my gap. Anyways, this is where it gets kind of interesting on the belt. I need to flip these plans over so I can show you guys what the plans I'm talking about. How many of you guys are uh, beginner builders out there? Or experienced. So anyways, here's the wing cross section at airline servo section. So that's right here. Okay. And then if you look here, I'll get you in nice and close. You can see where this keeps falling it down to almost a point. Well, right now what we have is square, so we need to get rid of, let's see if I can get a pointer here. So we need to get rid of that, like that. Okay. And this is on both the leading edge, I mean on the flat and the arrow on. They're built the same, they're just smaller. So bear with me, I'm going to sand these a little bit so I can keep going. But I'm just going to be nice and easy on this. And there again, I'm not putting any pressure on my sanding block here. I'm just letting the sandpaper do the work. This is 80 grit sandpaper. It does not take much time to get the results you're after. You can kind of start eyeballing it with the flange or with the angle. The angle of the dangle. And see where maybe you're sanding not enough or maybe a little too much. You don't want to take away the the uh, you don't want to sand on the, the ribs. Just want to sand that flat right there, that angle. Maybe you can see that. Great angle here. See, there you go. It doesn't take much. There's the arrow on. And do the same on the flap. I'm going to say just kind of kind of get her started. Maybe too much angles all right at first. Kind of get it going and then start flattening it down until you hear them. You kind of hear that. Hear that? That's when you're pretty close to it on the ribs. There again, that's the same. Maybe a little bit more in the center. When I do that, I kind of do this. I just run that in the center. There we go. Like that. Okay, so Let me get this 
whole thing in the front. Not quite. Eh, right about there. Okay. I'm not. I'm just going to glue here. I'm not going to go all the way down to the uh, edge here because, like I said, these are. This is only a three inch panel. Doesn't take much glue. Just rubbing it right across there. And then I'm just going to line it up with the leading edge of my point up on the top here. That's pretty good. And then flatten her out. Keep your arm hands moving until that glue dries up. And it starts sticking real good. The edges seem to be the common problem on these. Feel the heat coming through the balsa wood. get too much glue transferred to the outside which is good these flying tip zone saws don't like glue on them <laughs> ask me how I know and we should have enough to do what yep funny there again we're gonna do, do the same Real quick. Going over the ribs a little bit. I'm more focused on getting this thing straight across this leading edge. I don't want to sand a whole lot on that leading edge. I, I just want it to be, you know, let's true it up. And then that's the end of it. I already see a problem. I see one of them broke. Yeah, we'll fix it. There we go. There's that. I'll let that sit there and dry. Like I said, I've already pre-cut some pieces here for the over. For the shortage here and see how that fits on there real nice this is actually a little different <laughs> okay that's fine same thing and all I'm gonna do here is run a bead down the trailing edge here and then kind of tack it where the uh, ribs are at here along the edge if it gives us problems we can always go back and uh, throw some thin CA in there or something to for the, for the wet but not that big of a deal Like I said, on this leading edge, all I'm doing is drop, 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 right where those reds are at. Almost got me. <laughs> that quick. Oh, I think it did. No, nope, you'd be all right. Ok, 
Okay. And I'll trim this back. On this side. Trim that back. Okay. Now, I have that part done. Let's see. Like I said, I want to. So what I came up, the idea that I came up with is that you know my favorite control horns, Dubro control horns here, and this will be the bottom of the airline, so it's going to come through like this. Or no, I'm, uh, excuse me, this is the top. So this comes through the top. And that'll sit in there kind of like that, you know. I mean, inside, you know, wherever we put the, it'll be in this bay in here somewhere, somewhere, probably pretty close to the edge. So what I'm gonna do, and I can show how, show you guys how to do this. It's not super hard, but I'll probably take like a quarter inch dowel rod and drill this hole through the center of it, and then what I'll do is when I drill figure out my where this has got to go and the angle of it because you can see it's at an angle well it's it's flat with the top I guess but the bottoms no the tops angled what the I don't usually do these <laughs> you have to forgive me anyways when we go to drill this it'll have to be straight reason why I did this is because this puts it out more towards the rip, the hinge, hinge line. It's close. The hinge line's right here. So the hinges go in towards the top. I think he wanted some differential in it. I don't like differential. I've never cared for planes that were set up with differential. Um, that's, uh, um, you know, air on, when your airlines are turning... It's more down than up sort of deal. Um, so this gets it closer to the center line where it's more true, where it's going equal amounts up and down. So that's why I decided to do that. And you're going to, it needs a hinge, it needs a pocket to go through because, you know, you start squeezing that in there. And you see, it doesn't bow much, but it's got gift to it, and it's not. That's not very strong. So we'll get we'll we'll be across that bridge when we get there. But I did decide to do that before I started building building these because you know, you kind of had to know. You know, one way you could have done it was, you know, put a, you know, when you got an open structure like this, you could put a horn down here in the bottom to screw it in. And you could put a plywood filler inside here to screw it to. It's really all you need. You know, but that would have put it real low down down here down here. And it would have put the center line of the uh the horn way back. This way I'm able to get it kind of going forward a little bit more so I get rid of that differential that I don't that I don't care for. So anyways, there's an air line, or a flap, and there's an air line, and we're almost done with these. So let's get, uh, I already got the leading edge material cut out. This is quarter inch by one. Uh, the other thing I wanted to show you on this is, this, let me get you out of here and show you. If you look at this part, you can see it's flat on the bottom, right? And it dives in at the top. Okay. So, this is square here. This is not square here. So what we're going to do is, is we're going to line up the uh, back corner, or the top corner of that uh, quarter, by hat, quarter by one with the top of the sheeting here. And then there again we will have to sand... That bevel under there, so that's what I'm gonna do next. We'll sand the sheeting so it lines everything lines up so we have no gaps. Okay.
Okay. Sorry about all the moving around tonight. We'll see how long this video takes. This might be the only one. We're already at 30 minutes. So anyways, I'm just, like I said, I'm just letting the, let the sand tape do the work. Maybe. <laughs> kind of awkward to hang on to. We're just going to get everything through that way. I'm just going to kind of monitor it after I get I did have a little bit of high spots on the rib. It does not take long to remove some balls with any of it. Up. Yeah, it ain't much, but it does does make a difference. Go ahead and do that to the flap, sir. Flap. <coughs> no, excuse me. I think it'd be kind of cool to have these wings or this plane maybe ready for cover by the weekend by the end of the weekend don't have a whole lot going on with the cold and don't have work going on this week to get in the way so I would expect some videos out of me anyway Now I'm going to try to fix the truest edge I can. Like I said, we want to line it up so that top leading edge, as you can see there, lies down like that. It's kind of hard to see with all the light. <laughs> I think I need to sand on this one just a little bit more. Yeah. I got a few gaps in there I don't like. It's nice and easy. Try not to rock things too much here. basic concept glue in here I'm just, all I'm doing is just eyeballing this. Skip them as close as I can. And move my finger to it a little bit there. You feel the heat. <laughs> Get your fingers out of the way. If 
usually give this a few minutes to kind of dry up. I'm using, uh, again, just medium. Um, it's from Dad's Toy Shop. It's just uh, um, Bob Smith Industry stuff, PSI. Okay. quite get good adhesion there it happens pull that into place You know. And same on this end. Put some glue, let it wick in there a little bit. Pull it tight. <coughs> God. I'm getting better. <laughs> I promise. I, I was in a uh, pretty bad shape there three days, four days ago. It was a long week last week. Very cold. Anyhow, there is an airline servo, or an airline just about done. I'll go ahead and trim this to length. Should have enough room here to do one more. Oh yeah, honey. And that one's looking like it's even fitting a little better. Huh. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna show you a little closer here. What I'm doing. All I'm doing is getting a little. I'm not even. I'm not pushing that hard. I'm getting a little bead going, almost like welding. Just running a thin line right down the sides here. And I'm pushing a little bit, but not much. Okay. And then, like I said, I'm just eyeballing that top edge there, line it up with the other side, and I'll get it on the workbench and push it into place, and get glue on your fingers, you ain't doing it right. <laughs> finally shut off well it was cold in here this morning come out here to work and I'm like started kind of tinkering around cleaning things up and that and I'm like why am I out here to like see my damn breath I got that furnace over there and it had started it had kicked on but I had forgotten to turn it up you know like an hour before I got decided to come out here and work because I usually keep it at like 45, 50 degrees during the week when I'm gone. That way my wife and my kid ain't got to worry too much about it. Doesn't really go through that many pellets during the week. Keeps it warm enough to keep the electronics happy. That's about it. So anyways. Yeah, I forgot to turn that up. Anyways, that is ready for... So now what we got to do is we got to come in here and I will take my plane 
and I'll plane this down so I'm just about to the sheeting and then I'll finish it off with sanding and this side I'll just radius it a little bit I'll radius this side a little bit and through the magic of I've already done this once <laughs> you know here's the finished right left side that was right side I went through this once already because I wasn't exactly sure uh where uh um where i was gonna be at with wood and stuff so i was like well i got four of them, right so anyways this is the left side i've marked that that's left air line i've already started doing some preliminary uh sanding and see where i knocked that down and now we got our angle in there where it's nice and flat we're gonna hinge in here i've never done that before so i'm kind of curious as to how that's gonna work I have not picked hinges out, but I'm I'm really erring on the side of using uh, CA hinges. I don't have any, so I have to. I uh, I hear the ones on Amazon aren't too bad, but um, I think uh, I think my hobby shop down in Dayton, I think they sell sell a, a box of, or a a big you know thing of them. You can cut your own. I've done that before when Great Plains had those and you couldn't get thugs. So anyways, there's that. So I will call that. I'm, I'm not going to sand those on. You watched me sand enough today. So anyways, those are the, uh, like I said, this is the left flap. I don't have the outer wing panels quite ready to mate up, but I do have the right. One's ready to made up. Oh, I can't believe how much longer that is. Oh, well. More flat than necessary. That's going to come out a little bit more yet. Well, that makes sense. You know. Huh. Anyway. We'll run with it. Then the left arrow will be out here. So, yeah, I think I'm going to call it for a night. I'm probably going to call that a video and just say, you know, the, uh, see if I can get my noggin in here. There we go. I need the shave. Oh. <laughs> um, anyways, I think I'm going to call that a night. Uh, we're going to get back on this thing first thing tomorrow morning. I'm going to finish prepping these, uh, wings out for, uh, getting ready to set the hydro up and that and get all those ribs cut off on the other wing panel and uh i think that's where we're gonna do tomorrow is maybe get uh um remember we left those inner wing panel inner inner ribs loose you know to those inner ribs loose to set the dihedral because it gets the polyhedral um inch and inch and a half on each wing tip so we need to set those up I need to make the hydro braces and uh we could in theory get this wing together tomorrow and get epoxy in the dihedrals and then uh if i can get that done tomorrow morning maybe then maybe tomorrow evening i can get uh the rest of it sheeted i'd like to get the i think what i'm going to do is get the rib get the ribs glued in at the correct angle figure out how to make a jig to do that figure out what angle they need to be at i can make a guide on the wing tips to on the wing panels to do that get those glued in and then finish sheeting them because they're going to be easier in four small sections instead of two big ones I don't know. You guys tell me what you think. I'll probably be reading comments tomorrow as this video is posted. I'll probably uh, edit it tonight and have it post in the morning. So, and then once all the all the uh, sheeting's applied, and I need to make, yeah. So tomorrow's going to be a busy day, I think, on wings. And then cross my fingers that uh, you know maybe we can get them get the wings done. Yeah, yeah, I need to come up with a order of operations here since I'm just, you know, shooting from the hip like Puddin likes to say. So, <laughs> anyways, uh, 
you guys take her easy. Thanks for watching. And uh, I will uh, talk to you later.